Shalom Israel, and welcome to another edition of Yashar Allah Library. Today what we're going to deal with is two books. One book is called The Rise of Russia, and the second book we're going to deal with is a book called The Annunciation Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin. Now, if you've been in Israel for a while, and you've watched videos of brothers going out to camp and teaching, a lot of times brothers have to teach the most elementary things in the scriptures to actually get our people's attention. Our people for the longest have been taught that the Bible is a white man's book. When they think about Christ and all the apostles and the prophets and the kings of Israel and the people of the Bible in general, the first thing that pops into the majority of our people's mind is those renaissance images that they've seen their whole lives such as the white image of Christ painted by Michelangelo so if you watch these camp videos you'll notice that a lot of times brothers in order to prove that Yahweh Jesus Christ was a black man they'll they'll do two things they'll either reference a picture that a talented brother in Israel might have drawn depicting the description of Yahweh that we find in the book of Revelations the first chapter and the 14th verse while other camps will reference the Russian icons. They'll actually download images from Google or other sites and put them out you know, on a board so that people can see that we knew even back 500 years ago that the apostles of the Bible, the prophets, the kings, so forth and so on, were black. But have you ever wondered why it is that all the icons in Russia that you see are black? Have you ever wondered why? Well, the answer to that question is very simple. The reason why the icons of Russia are black is because black people were ruling Russia during the time that these icons were painted. If you were to go to Russia, some of the main sites in Russia that you would go to would be the cathedrals. The cathedrals are some of the main prime tourist attractions in Russia, as well as the museums. And when you go into these different cathedrals, you'll notice that most of the icons on the wall are black. Now, we'll be particularly dealing with two cathedrals, two very famous cathedrals in Russia. One is called the Cathedral of the Annunciation, and the other cathedral is called the Cathedral of St. Basil. Now, I'm showing you on your screen a picture of St. Basil the Great, also known as Basil the Fool. And you can clearly see he has an afro, he has a long beard, and he's dark-skinned. Well, there's a cathedral in Russia that was built in commemoration of this black man, this Israelite man, this brown-skinned man. It was built in his commemoration, and it was built by a black Russian czar. Now, why is that important? The reason why that is important is because at the same time that the cathedral of St. Basil and the Cathedral of Annunciation were being built in Russia, which is Western Europe going into Asia. I mean, excuse me, Eastern Europe going into Asia. What did you have going on in Western Europe at that same time? At that same time, you had the Renaissance going on in Western Europe, where all the iconoclasm or the destruction of the black art was taking place. So while that was taking place, these Russian czars were building cathedrals in Russia and painting black icons at the very same time. Now, why did that happen? The Most High is behind that. So before we actually get into these two books, I just want to read two quick scriptures to you. The first scripture I want to go to is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 1. It says, The king's heart is in the hands of the Most High. The heart is referring to his mind. The king's mind is in the hands of the Most High. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So the Most High causes the king to do his bidding. Whatever the Most High wants that king to do, the Most High has that king do. Another scripture we're going to go to was one chapter before. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord how can a man then understand his own way so those two scriptures are a little bit of an insight to have you understand 
why the Most High had these guys paint, or I should say build these cathedrals and have these black icons painted. The reason was because in Western Europe, our image, the image of the real Israelites, the real Jews, the real Christians was being destroyed. But at the same time, blacks were still ruling in Eastern Europe. So the Most High had these icons survive even up to today. And that's why brothers are able to use these icons out on the street as part of our proof that we know that the real Jews, the real Christians are black. And also let me add one last thing to this before we actually get into these books. The Russian icons predate Renaissance art. You can find the Russian icons from the 10 hundreds, the 9 hundreds, the 11 hundreds, which is all pre-Renaissance that are dark, but you'll be hard pressed to find a white or red, I should say, image of Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the angels, so forth and so on, that predates the Renaissance. That's the importance of these icons. Not that these icons are an actual depiction of Yahweh or the prophets. That's not what they are. But what they are is they're a reminder of what we already know that the scriptures already say. And they help our people break through that barrier of having that Renaissance Edomite white image out their heads and they can see themselves as being the Israelites, which is very important. And then they can move on to the weightier matters of the scriptures. Now we're going to go to this book called The Rise of Russia. And this book is by Time Life Publications, which is a very, very prestigious publication. It's part of a larger series of books that include another very popular book called Imperial Rome. But we're going to stick with this particular book called The Rise of Russia. And we're going to go to page 128. And I want you to focus on the guy in the middle of your screen. We're going to read the caption that's underlined underneath the picture, and then we're going to examine the picture. It says, A feeble-minded czar, Fedor, inherited the unrest stirred up by his father, Ivan the Terrible. Now take a good look at this picture. The first thing anybody with two eyes can see, or even one eye for that matter, is that the guy in the picture is dark-skinned. The second thing that you can see clearly is that the guy in the picture has woolly hair. This is a so-called Negro, a so-called black man, an Israelite that was ruling Russia from the year 1584 to the year 1598. And during that time, many Russian icons were painted. Why do you think a lot of the icons that were painted during that time was dark-skinned? Why? Because dark-skinned people were ruling Russia just like I said, you have a lot of simple-minded Edomites, so-called white people, that are just as simple as our people, Israelites, so-called blacks and Hispanics. And they come on the comment boards and they tell us that we're out of our minds for saying that blacks rule Russia during the Dark Ages. Well, guess what? We don't just say that blacks rule Russia during the Dark Ages, but Time Life Publications, a prestigious publication amongst you so-called white people, says that black people rule Russia during the Dark Ages. And this picture... Is proof of that now we're going to turn to page 76 in this book called the rise of Russia now the statue that you're looking at is a statue of the Russian Tsar Ivan the terrible now the broad nose and the full lips are a dead giveaway that Ivan the terrible just like his son was a so-called Negro a so-called black man an Israelite and he ruled from the year 1547 to the year 1584. He was the Tsar of Russia from 1547 to 1584. In the year 1552, this black Russian Tsar commissioned a cathedral to be built in commemoration of a victory that he had over a group called the Kazan Tartars. And after he defeated the Kazan Tartars in that battle, he commissioned a cathedral to be built. And what cathedral was that? It was the Cathedral of St. Basil. And in case you have a short memory, St. Basil, as I showed you earlier, was a so-called Negro, a so-called black man, an Israelite. And he had a cathedral built in his name by this black czar, Ivan the Terrible. And what do you find when you go inside the Cathedral of St. Basil? You find black icons. So you have a black czar, 
that builds a cathedral in commemoration of a black patron saint and inside the cathedral is black icons depicting the people the prophets of the bible this is all not a coincidence okay now before i uh get off ivan the turbo i want to say one last thing about him he was not a nice guy okay if you know anything about history he killed his son so he was not a nice guy as a matter of fact speaking of the cathedral of saint basil some historians record that the guy that built the cathedral of saint basil designed and built the cathedral Ivan the Terrible had him killed after he was done. Why did he have the guy killed? Because he said the cathedral was so magnificent that he didn't want that guy to build anything greater. So what did he do? He had him put to death. All right, so he wasn't a nice guy, but he was an Israelite. And that's a dead giveaway as to why you find so many black icons that were painted even during his time. Now we're going to deal with this book called The Annunciation Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin. The Annunciation Cathedral was a cathedral that was built during the reign of Ivan the Great, also known as Ivan the Third. He's the grandfather of the so-called black man, the Israelite man, Ivan the Terrible, and the great-grandfather of Ivan the Terrible's son, Fedor, who we also proved was a so-called black man. Now when we look really quickly back at this book called The Rise of Russia, remember this picture I showed you of Fedor? The guy on his left is supposed to be Ivan the Great or Ivan the Third. But you can clearly see that that picture is totally out of place. It doesn't match in substance or in style to any of the images that I've been showing you earlier. It doesn't match in substance or style to the picture of Fedor, nor does it match in substance and definitely not in style to all the paintings of the Russian icons. That's something that Time Life book threw in there to throw the reader off. Could you imagine if they put a dark image of Ivan the Great? Then people will start to say, wait a minute, were all these guys black? So it's up to the reader to be able to decipher the difference. That's not Ivan the Third. Ivan the Third was a so-called black man. He was an Israelite man. All right. Now he had a cathedral built during his time called the Cathedral of the Annunciation. Now we want to take a look inside the Cathedral of the Annunciation and let's take a look inside and see what we see. Now, when you go to and look at figure 154, that's the prophet Aaron, the brother of Moses, clearly a so-called black man, an Israelite man. All right. Now let's take a look at another image. This is figure number 209, and this is the prophet Daniel. Now, for those of you that don't remember, when you read the book of Daniel's Chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, the book of Daniel describes Christ, Yahweh as being dark-skinned. Now we find a Russian icon of the prophet Daniel himself being dark-skinned. By the way, when you read the book of Daniel, the first chapter, it tells you that Daniel was from the tribe of Judah, pursuant to Jeremiah 14 and 2 that says Judah is what? Black unto the ground. So this image is accurate. All right? Now let's take a look at figure number 157. That's Gideon. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at figure number 162. This is Joshua. Okay. Clearly a jape. Clearly with an afro, dark skin, everything. All right. Moving on. <clears throat> 